Hi everybody, my name is Christian. I'm osteopathic manual practitioner. My clinic is in Ottawa and is named Orosteo. I will show you here some videos about uh, osteopathy exercises, advices. Don't forget to subscribe, to ring the bell for notifications, and don't hesitate to let a comment for future videos and information. Hi everyone. So I wanted to do um, a short video about um, some reminder about all what we need to be in a good health or to come back in a balanced health. So that's something I, um, uh, I speak about with my patients about every day. And uh, so it's not something what came just uh, out of the blue. Uh, I did read some books, I did see some videos of some people and there are a few, um, many actually, interesting specialists about all of that. And that is how it came out that it doesn't exist, of course, a magical pill, a magical treatment, a magical profession to keep us healthy, to live as long as possible in a perfect health. Um, but it's a group of things we need to follow, or we should follow, everybody does what he wants, but that explains that um, it's not passive. We need to be active in our health uh, management. So this few, some of these few people I speak about, uh, for example, Norman Deutsch, who wrote about neuroplasticity. Um, John G. Reitty, who is a psychiatric doctor at uh, Harvard, who made a book, who, what is named Sparks, what explains that sports at school is very important to increase the academics uh, for teenagers, for example, high school, but at any age, actually. Uh, Dr. Perlmutter, uh, he's a neurologist in Florida. Uh, he wrote a few interesting books, for example, Brain Maker, about our gut, about the importance of a healthy nutrition in relation with neurologic diseases. And so I will not go further with that, but that are interesting. Uh, uh, people to listen to, for example. So the different points we will go through. Uh, first, to exercise. So what means exercising? It's easy to say do a sport, do an activity, but how? Technique, uh, cardio and all that. Do whatever you like to do. In general, what is important is every day to do 20, 30 minutes of a low cardio activity. What can be walking, better outside than inside, to breathe also better. So 20, 30 minutes low. Um, it can be doing some yoga, doing meditation, whatever if possible, two, three times a week to increase our cardio to our maximal uh, cardio frequency. And that is 80% of 220 minus the age. So you can see already that older we get, easier it is actually. So when you're 20 years old, old that 80% would be 160 pulse. So for someone uh, who likes to run, do interval training, use stairs, use different kind of exercises. You are an elderly person, you can see on the picture um, a man walking with a walker. Yes, it can be an activity, walk with your walker and uh, I don't know, stay on a place and lift a little bit faster your knees. Um, go a little bit faster in your walking. Sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up. Do squats. That all increases a little bit your heart rate. 
So at any age, with any activity, we can do cardio exercises. Second point, cigarette. And that's a no-no. Uh, as you can see on the picture, cigarette, vapor, uh, what it's named, vaporizing in English? No. Cigarette is doing damage to the lungs. It took decades to explain really precisely why cigarettes are so damageable in the body and create diseases. You can believe or not, no problem with that, but it does. And hopefully soon we will also find out that to vaporize an oil into lungs is not really healthy. We know it, but so far it's not a precise scientific research about it. Certainly question of money and incomes, but hopefully soon it, soon it will come out. And uh, then at least if you are addicted to that, you know why you get sick. Um, so easy to say, don't smoke. But if you know why you started to smoke, there are many reasons for that. Often stress is in relation with it. So if you know why, it's easier to find out how much it didn't make sense and you can stop. Then for the addictive part, nicotine and all the crap in it, habits, the morning for cigarettes, after meal cigarette, then you can see an acupuncturist, a doctor, an homeopath to have some tricks, some uh, skills, some techniques to stop it, not to be addictive, any, addicted anymore. Alcohol, so it's better none of it, but alcohol, we can speak about moderation. You can have three portions a day, two, 10 to 15 portions a week. Um, the idea of three portions a day, I'm not a big fan of it because it means if you have a fourth portion, then, oh my God, you got alcoholic. Uh, and if you're stressed out when you are on your way home from your job, and you think about that glass of whiskey you will have when you are home, it's the beginning of an issue. Think about it. But more important, what is a portion? So no difference, men and women. Like the 10 to 15 portions, I don't care you're a man or a woman. Um, that's a bit sexist to say women can support less alcohol than men. Everybody's different, so go from there, try to know your body, and be reasonable. Um, but a portion, uh, strong alcohol, two centiliters. Uh, I think it's one ounce, but don't want to go with ounces. Go with uh, the metric system. Uh, and Beer is 25 centiliters. A glass of wine is 12.5 centiliters. So six glasses of wine in one bottle. Now think about what is the amount of your usual beer here. What uh, is the amount of wine you put in your glass? and you can have an idea where you are in your portions, everyone. Again, no judgment, but have a little look to it. Sleeping. Next point. So again, that's not my opinion, that is science. It came out that uh, in average, we need to have seven to nine hours of sleep per night. Uh, 7.52, I think, is uh, the real average number. I know some people don't need as much. Five hours, they have enough. Some others, they need eight, nine, ten hours sometimes a night to get rested. 
The only thing about it is that when we sleep, that is when our body flushes all the toxins in the brain. It was found uh, during an, uh, a dynamic MRI. So the person was lying in the tunnel and in the brain you could see some green points. That is the lymphatic, uh, lymphatic pipes, the lymphatic uh, sense system in the brain. And as soon as the person started to fall asleep, it was a firework. So it was a big green splash in the brain. So that showed really uh, objectively that when we sleep, that is when our brain flushes all the crap into, in it. And it takes between seven to nine hours to really get cleaned. So that's a restful night. Um, nutrition. So I will not speak about any kind of diet, any kind of trend. Just go back 2,400 years ago. Hippocrates said, may your food be your first medication. And that all what we can find in the nature is healthy. So processed foods, all what is already prepared, all what contains a sticker with all kind of preservatives, all kind of uh, trap inside, pesticides or whatever, is to avoid as much as possible. So do you food from scratch in the limit of the possibilities, of course. Uh, again, that is um, an advice in a perfect world but remember that when you uh, and we are all the same when you order some uh, junk food when you uh, do a sandwich or whatever is it because you find that that is really what you need now or is it because you're a little bit lazy to cook is it uh, because you uh, don't want to spend time for it uh, or you don't have time then think about do you not have time or you don't you don't want to take the time uh, no judgment um, <clears throat> our digestive system needs about 40 to 70 thousand years to adapt to a new type of food so think about when you say oh we did always eat that stuff. What is always? Was it because your grandparents, your grand grandparents did eat that every day that it suddenly becomes healthy? Or is it because 10,000 years ago they did eat that? So just to say, to introduce the, the last point about nutrition is a plate, a balanced plate, is not just a balance between fat, proteins, carbs. It's also a plate full of colors. Green, yellow, red, vegetables. Um, that gives energy in your plate. So it shows that white food is, is a bit boring. And if something is boring, it has a lack of energy. Um, just meat in a plate is boring. So I'm not saying you need to be vegetarian or vegan. It's always a question of balance. And all extremes are not good. But I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a doctor and uh, I don't uh, go with uh, any specific diet. Lately, the trend is the keto diet. So if I ask 10 people doing the keto diet to give me um, the definition of a keto diet, what is it about? I have 10 different uh, um, definitions of it. So be careful with that. I don't say it's a bad one. It's actually an interesting diet, but Go with it with the support of a specialist uh, to do it for health and not to do it 
just to lose weight, for example. If you have an interesting, balanced, natural diet, you will have the weight your body needs to have to stay active, to sleep well, uh, to have a good lifestyle. Next point, positive stress management. Don't have a recipe for that, of course, but positive stress management doesn't mean to see the life in pink and everything is fine. It's certainly not to see a problem and to think, oh, I will never get rid of that and never find a solution. Then for sure you will never find a solution. But you see a problem, say, if it's a problem, there's a solution. What can I do to go there? What can I find for help to go through? What is the best solution for me, for everybody? And that is how you will go forward. That is a positive stress management. Think about the mask in the plane. Remember when they give the security uh, reminders about uh, the oxygen mask going down and saying, if they fall down, put first your mask on and then help others. So that means you need first to think about yourself. Life is like that. If you are healthy, if you're in a good shape, you can give an example, you can help others. If you are just there to give advices and not to follow them yourself, then we cannot go further in it. Um, often people ask me, uh, but are you doing all of that? I try. I'm not perfect, far away to be perfect. But at least I try to be as close as possible to all of that. Last of them, to avoid pollution. Easy to say again. Um, so the idea is not to kind of uh, uh, listen too much to the politicians and say, oh yeah, if the world is that, it's my fault, so I should pay more taxes uh, to make it better. No, it's first their job, but we should also try at least to do some little moves. So if everybody is doing that little move, um, recycling, uh, um, like I said, with nutrition to make uh, food from scratch, uh, have less waste. Uh, do we need really to buy uh, jeans every week because we have, uh, we need to have a big budget a month to be trendy? Not sure of that. Um, if our TV is working, do we need to change it because it's a new technology coming out? Not sure of that. Um, could the farmers uh, be able, because it's not their responsibility, to produce locally and to sell themselves? I think that are different points we could learn from that confinement we are in right now and see how the world is happy that we are less active and our activity is maybe not as helpful and positive than we think. So hopefully we will learn from that and change a little bit the world when we go out, go out of it. So to remind all of that, the so seven points, exercising, avoiding cigarette, alcohol moderation, sleep management, food management, positive stress management, avoiding as possible pollution. That is what we need to stay in health, in health to come back to health. What is the position of osteopathy about that? We can help for it. No exercises, all that make your muscle joint system being in balance. Uh, cigarette, alcohol, sleep and that craniosacral, visceral techniques can help to keep your body in a good uh, balance again. Uh, nutrition, stress management, pollution. Uh, we can give advices, that's free. Uh, don't need to pay for that. Uh, 
Um, but uh, if your your cranial sacral system, for example, is in a good balance, it's easier for your body to adapt to all of that. So, as possible, try to go with these seven points and nobody will judge but a treatment whatever it is medical osteopathic treatment physio whatever it's a teamwork and you patients are the major part of that team so if you can stay active in that treatment it will help the treatment to be more efficient and you don't need to see us so often so so thank you for your attention and uh, hope to see you soon for further videos i hope to do some more uh, practical but for, but for that i'm waiting for some uh, uh, video material and audio material uh, to make it more convenient so in the meantime stay safe and see you soon.